Well, the time has come for me to make an announcement. Um, that announcement is, I'm moving to a city. So, really? You, you know, country guy and whatever else, a mountain man type of guy, you're going to move to a city? Oh yeah, I'll tell you about the city. Um, its initials are NJ. You say, you're moving to New Jersey? Uh, no, New Jerusalem. Turn in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 13. But there's a city I'm going to before I get to New Jerusalem. I'm going to visit a city and I'm going to permanently move to New Jerusalem. I'm going to show you about that in this study here. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14 says here, For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Um, the Lord's going to do some things in me when we get to heaven and I, you know, this corruptible becomes incorruptible because right now um, I'm seeking that city because the Bible says, explains it, whatever else we're going to go through the scriptures, but uh, I'm not really seeking a city on the earth right now. I stay far away from the cities. Uh, I was born and raised in the country and, uh, you know, the woods and everything else and hundreds of acres where we had access to and I was happiest back in the woods walking around and things on, um, you know, are you seeking moving to a city? No, but uh, there's a special city that I don't have to worry about crimes or the bad side of town or other, you know, adult clubs or other bad things that come in the city and, you know, Wi-Fi and all the other stuff that you have in there now. Um, there's a good city that I'm going to be going to, I'm going to go and check out this city. Revelation chapter 20. Let's go there. We'll talk about this city. Two cities. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 through 9. This is after the time of Jacob's trouble. It says here, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison, and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. Hmm. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. There's a beloved city that will be on the earth in the thousand year kingdom. And if you know what that city is, it's Jerusalem where Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign from. I'm going to go and visit that city. I don't know if I'll be living there yet. That's up to the Lord. It's up to him where he's going to station me. All right, but I will be visiting that city. Let's talk about that. Zechariah, back to the Old Testament, the minor prophets, right before you get to the New Testament, if you are newly saved, the book of Zechariah. Go back before the book of Matthew. You turn back through there, not very far, and you'll hit the book of Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I was jealous for Zion with great jealousy, for I was jealous for her with great fury. Thus saith the Lord, I am returned unto Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. <laughs> well, I'm post-millennial. I think that Jesus will come at the end. That Jesus won't be there for the thousand-year kingdom. What's it mean when he dwells in Jerusalem then, in the midst of Jerusalem? And Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth, and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, There shall yet old men and old women dwell in the streets of Jerusalem, and every man with his staff in his hand for very age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in the streets thereof. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If it be marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, should it also be marvelous in mine eyes, saith the Lord of hosts? Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. Um, that city is going to be there for a thousand years. That is describing the millennial kingdom, the thousand year reign of Jesus Christ physically on the earth. Now go to the Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah 14 verse 16 down through verse 21, we'll read some more about this city that's on the earth. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. 
All right. So if I'm not stationed in Jerusalem, if the Lord has work for me to do over in Germany or you know whatever you want to call it, and after the you know the time of Jacob's trouble, he makes a full end of all nations. So whatever the area is called, whatever the Lord has His name for it, um, I'm still going to go up every year to Jerusalem to worship the King, and I'll take my people and I'll say, okay, let's go up. Verse 17, And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, they that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the feast of tabernacles. The Lord's going to have us go there for this Jewish holiday. Pretty interesting. Verse 20. In that, day there shall, in that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord, and the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in, the, and in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Lord singles out a single race and says, okay, you're not coming in here. <laughs> hmm, interesting there. But um, I'm going to visit that city. But uh, where's the city that I'm moving to? Turn to Revelation 21. Revelation chapter 21, verse 1 through verse 17. And I saw a new heaven and, new, and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. There you go. Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice of, out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former, th former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit, to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Never seen a city like that before. Verse 12, And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, we'll come back to this in a minute, in a minute. the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. Length, breadth, height. Of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof in hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. Um, yes, angels are men. There's no female angels in the entire Bible. So, you know, the beautiful angels with, you know, women with the feathery wings, they're not angels. Okay, they're wickedness and uh, I think it's Zephaniah or something, or maybe it's Zechariah. It's one of the two Z books, excuse me, not in the sermon here, but um, the measure of a man which is the angel there. What's the cubit? Well, the cubit, I think, is basically a measurement from the tip of your finger here to the down here on your elbow. All right. Um, so how big is an angel's cubit? I have no idea. But uh, 12,000 furlongs. 
that is a more accurate representation of how big this New Jerusalem is going to be. Well, one furlong equals 660 feet. So in other words, eight furlongs would be one mile. 660 times eight would be 5,280 feet. Interesting. Oh, we don't, uh, re re I reject the Bible because it's, it's not scientific and whatever else. Then why are furlongs basically given as a measurement of one mile? There's so much science in the Bible that, you know, our modern day world is patterned after the Bible and the stupid atheists out there, they don't even realize that. <laughs> you know, the Bible's a book of fairy tales and whatever else. Okay, how do we get the measurement for a mile? Did somebody just come up with it or something? It's based on eight furlongs. But they don't get stuff like that. So 12,000 furlong, 12, furlongs times 660 feet would be 7,920,000 feet. And you divide that by 5,280 feet per mile. You would come up with exactly 1,500 miles. So in other words, New Jerusalem is going to be 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and 1,500 miles high. That's a big city. Uh, that's a very big city. And um, clear as crystal and there's gold and precious stones and everything else. Let's read about that. Pretty amazing. Verse 18. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. You say, well, that's not possible. How can gold be clear and whatever? Well, the Bible said it. And I trust this book more than I trust a bunch of dumb people on YouTube in the comment section saying that that's not scientific or something. Yeah, well, whatever. You haven't seen it. I'll trust the book before I trust you. Verse 19, And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. I can't even fathom that. It's just amazing to think about. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the glory of God is Jesus Christ, by the way, the Lamb. If you get that. Godhead doctrine, in other words. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall, no, there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither, worketh, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. <laughs> Sorry, we don't want any filth in here. Go. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but you know, it's an interesting thing. I've seen something over the years with people. If they pick up a gemstone or there's some kind of a, you know, some kind of a crystal or ruby or something like that. And what do they do? Hold it up to the light. They look through that. Wow, it's beautiful. Wow, look at that. That's so pretty. Why do they do that? Why is there a fascination with looking at a beautiful gemstone and looking at the light coming through it. Um, because that's heaven. That's New Jerusalem. Imagine a city 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles long, and 1,500 miles high. And you walk up and down in that city and it's golden streets. You look at it from this angle and it's gold, and, but yet you look down on it and it's clear. You think, wow. Just, I mean, could you imagine walking around in that? And you want me to give up my Bible for your atheistic science? <sighs> hey, man, you can go fornicate with some, you know, whore or something, and if you just get rid of your Bible, get rid of your religious beliefs and things. Uh, no. I have a city to look forward to. A city that will blow your mind. Oh, man, why don't you go in out and get into drugs? Why don't you watch a bunch of Hollywood movies? You know, come on, get involved in some stuff. Let's go out and get drunk. Huh? <laughs> no, thank you. 
No, sorry. Um, my reservation's been made. You know, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that you have eternal life. I believe the book. And the book says I'm going to be living in a city someday. I'm not going to be yearning and, and wishing I could be out in the mountains someplace in a little cabin and whatever else. I'm thankful for that stuff here. Praise the Lord for it. But in eternity, I'm moving to a city. And I'm looking forward to it. Um, and it isn't going to be just sort of a, oh, is it, you know, walking along and you brush against the wall. And, oh, it, I knocked a ruby out. The Lord didn't use enough Elmer's glue or something. You know, let me get that and just kind of, here, put, anybody have any duct tape? Let me just put this back on. <laughs> uh-uh, no. It's not just going to be the precious stones and the, the gold and the amazing city of crystal and whatever else. It's not going to be just that. The craftsmanship, I think, is going to be absolutely mind-blowing the way that the stairs are formed and they go up they they go this way and the the balconies and the railings and the streets and whatever else and walking around and all of eternity hey brother how you doing well it's you know really good singing to the lord there just last night or well we don't have night <laughs> but <laughs> wow amazing can't even fathom it and i'm what can you offer me on this earth that's worth me missing that? What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? A bunch of stinky, drugged out Hollywood celebrities. Well, I'd go hang out with them. Why? Well, because then you'd be famous. No, thank you. But have you seen their big house? Oh, you mean the big house that has... Uh, Shingles that need to be replaced on the roof and some wiring issues that need to be done and some plumbing problems and whatever else. And you want me to give up heaven for that? I understand I'm saved. I'm eternally secure. I get that. But I'm saying, lost people out there, I'd rather have my ridiculous vehicles and this thrill and that thrill and sit around drinking beer, watching the TV and my lazy boy recliner. Hey, you want to move to a city? Something that you can't even fathom. Let me read you the description. Ah, oh, whatever. Keep your religion. I got mine. You have yours. <laughs> no, thank you. No, thank you. You can have the world. I'll take Jesus and the city that he's preparing. Revelation 22 And you know, if you understand the Bible, there's not that many people saved. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So it's not going to be, you know, that we're stuck in some little, you know, little economy apartment, you know. I have a room. You know, my NIV said I have a room. I go to prepare a room for you. No, uh, I, Jesus said I'm going to prepare a mansion for you. Can you imagine that day? Can you imagine it? Lord isn't going to give you keys. You don't need keys. You don't need to lock it up because there's no crime. But, you know, come with me. Walking down the streets. Whoa, look. Wow, that's a nice mansion there. And there's one that you say, oh, man, that couldn't be mine because that, that's really nice. And the Lord says, uh, there you go. Enter in. Welcome to New Jerusalem. That's, that's for me. And our problems down here are what again? Set your mind on things above. Revelation chapter 22. Let's read the whole chapter as we go through this. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the, the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall serve Him. And they shall see His face. Singular. <laughs> okay, get that. You know, the throne of God and of the Lamb. It's not two thrones. It's one throne. Okay, they shall see His face. And His name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, 
These things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book, worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings, or seal not the seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. There it is. King James Bible. There you go. This doesn't cost you anything. Watch the videos. I'm not monetized. I don't require that you send me 10% of your tithe. Do you want it? Do you want to go to the city someday? Do you want to be my neighbor? Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I remember years ago I knew a preacher that... Uh, He'd go out to a retirement home, and there was an old woman out there, and she was bedridden. And she'd say, oh, brother, she said, could you, could you read me from the Scriptures? I'd just, I'd just love to hear you read. And he'd read to her from the Scriptures, and one week he came, and he said, hey, sister, he said, how, I, how about I read to you from the book of Revelation? And her, she said, no, no, I, I don't want you to read that book to me. She said, that's scary. She said, there's, there's some really scary things in there. And he said, well, how about chapter 21? Have you ever heard chapter 21? I don't know if I have. And he said, let me read to you chapter 21. And he started reading chapter 21, and he said she started crying. And she said, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. And he said, it's not all bad. And he said, next week I'll read chapter 22. No matter how bad things get, brethren, you can read chapter 21 and chapter 22. And remember that there's a city there, a city that we're going to move to someday. And the promises are, that are there are just, you can't even fathom it. I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. There isn't anything in this world. Oh, hey, guess what? They just passed a law, Brother Brian, that anybody that speaks against the Catholic Church, they're going to put to death. Go ahead, make my day. <laughs> you know, I'm that much closer to going to the city. I'll receive a better resurrection if I die. Hey, they're bringing out central bank digital currencies, Brother Brian. What are we supposed to do? We can't buy food. What are we going to do? We could die. Okay. That much closer to the city. You can't hurt me. You understand? You wicked, stupid, satanic idiots out there. You can't hurt me. You can't threaten me. I'm not afraid of you. I have a promise. What do you have? Return to the earth? Maggot? Worm? 
Or you're going to evolve. That's right. Maybe you'll evolve and you'll have some kind of new DNA technology or some kind of new, you know, I'll be, I'll upload my brain to the internet and it all exists forever. Moron. <laughs> Well, I don't believe the Bible. It's just a fairy tale book. Okay, fine, fine. Then go back to believing whatever you want to believe. No matter what happens in the future, brethren, you have to remember that uh, um, the old hymn there, Amazing Grace. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Again, boom, <laughs> mind blown. 10,000 years, and we'll have, you know, maybe a reckoning of time or whatever else, but it's forever. Forever. Whatever you have to suffer down here, suffer it. Go through it. Don't compromise. Stand. Stand firm. Stand strong. Hey, we, you need to do this. You need to do that. Well, that goes contrary to the Word of God. I'm not doing it. I won't do it. We're going to put you in prison. We're going to have to take you off to a camp someplace. And I'm not going to change. I have an eternity. It's written down. I'm guaranteed that I'm going to move to a city someday. And before that, I get to see New Jerusalem when the Lord is ruling and reigning on the earth. Can you fathom that? Can you think of what it's going to be like? Oh, where's your Jesus? Where's your God? Oh, he's in Jerusalem right now. <laughs> Come on. Oh, by the way, it's, yeah, it's, uh, oh man. <laughs> Feast or tabernacles. Hey, we have to go. Everybody, come on. We're going over to the Jerusalem there. City of the great king. Worship the king. He'll teach us of his ways. Get over there. Walking towards the temple and everybody's looking around. And here comes the children. They're running and they're playing and they're having a great time and whatever else. And there's lions playing along with them and bears. And, you know, there's a grizzly bear. It's 10 foot tall grizzly bear, polar bear. And there's some child up on his back. Weed. <laughs> Amazing what we have in the future. Don't let anybody rob you of your joy, brethren. We have some great times. So, hopefully that's been a blessing to you. Always remember the precious promises that are in Scripture and go back to those when you're going through a rough time. It'll keep you strong. Okay? So, wish it could happen soon. You know, I did this study about 2050, and, I'm, and I was not saying 2050 will be the year that the Millennial Kingdom starts. A lot of people just see the title and they, they think that's all that they see. You know, they answer the matter before they hear it. I wasn't saying that, okay? <laughs> I'm saying by 2050, I believe we will be in the Millennial Kingdom. It could start in 2040. It could start in 2030. I, I have no idea. Um, I don't know, but we're getting towards the end, and things are going to get really nutty. Um, so just please be encouraged, brethren. And uh, please do keep us in your prayers. And um, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.